I recently spent the past 11 months beating every single expert staff ghost in CAGP. Throughout this journey, I learned a lot about custom tracks, but I also learned that getting 250 gold stars takes a ton of hard work. I learned just how hard it is to know every custom track, and that the sheer amount of custom tracks is what's preventing many new players from playing them, and that the new players have a hard time knowing where to start. That is why today, I am bringing you every single important custom track shortcut and how to do them. Of course, since there are loads of shortcuts and strats that can be reviewed, I am only going to talk about the ones that are present on the most popular tracks and the ones that save the most time without being too difficult, which makes them important to know if you want to win races. But with all that said, let's get started. Starting off this list, we have Autumn Lee's Way. This track has many shortcuts, but the most important one is the gap jump. This shortcut saves loads of time compared to going around, and you can do just one mushroom. There are two main methods of doing this shortcut. The first one is by using TF or Toad's Factory inputs. Start wide and start a drift to the right close to the wall. You want to shroom once you hit the off-road, and upon tricking, hold left on your joystick while maintaining a drift. This will give you much more air and allow you to clear the gap. This is also the method that I recommend in online races. The second method of doing the shortcut is by doing a hop trick. Start wide and drift right close to the wall. You then want to shroom once you hit the off-road and upon reaching the edge, you want to do a hop and a trick simultaneously to the right. Keep in mind that the closer you are to the wall, the higher the elevation, so attempting the shortcut while further from the wall will be more difficult. Next up, we have the shortcut that is present on Boshi Skate Park. This shortcut is mandatory if you want to break away on this track, as going around is much slower and quite awkward. For this shortcut, I like to start wide and start a drift to the right, with the end goal being to charge the mini turbo. Upon reaching this ramp, you want to be as perpendicular as possible to it, meaning at a 90 degree angle to the ramp. Then, you want to release your mini turbo and trick, then trick off the beam to clear. In this example, I am not completely perpendicular, but the more perpendicular you are, the more air you'll get, as shown in this example. If you are not even close to 90 degrees to the ramp, you'll get no air and you will fail, losing a ton of time. And on this track, where it's very short, it can be very costly. The ending of Candy Coaster has a few shortcuts that save a lot of time over the regular route. As you can see here, the regular route is very slow since there are a lot of slow ramps that give you loads of air time. The first shortcut on this course saves a lot of time but it's quite difficult to perform. You want to be on the left side of the road heading towards the green ramp. As you approach the ramp, you want to start a drift to the left and aim to hit the piece of the road to the left of the green ramp. Once you are airborne, you want to hold right to get more air and to avoid hitting the ice cream cone. Upon landing, drift hard left, then once airborne, hold right to make it onto the track below. The other shortcut saves less time, but it's much easier and less punishing if you fail it. You want to trick off the first green ramp and approach the second green ramp with a wide alignment. Upon hitting the second green ramp, you want to trick and hold hard left. This will align you to the left of the third green ramp, where you can wheelie and make it down to the bottom. Cherry Blossom Garden is a relatively new track to CGP, and has many shortcuts. Though the one that you can do shroomless involves the fountain at the end, and it's mandatory if you want to front run this track without relying on items. While you can do this shortcut from the side of the fountain as shown here, the method we are going to be focusing on is from this rail. You want to align with your character's head aligned with the edge of the rail. You then drift right onto the rail. The goal here is to exit the rail while holding 90 degrees or almost 90 degrees to the right while avoiding the fence. You then trick off the edge of the rail and hold left in midair while maintaining the drift. You need to hold left in midair off this rail so that you get more height, therefore your trick boost will last longer upon tricking off the pink ramp. Then trick off the pink ramp and hold back to make it onto the fountain. Once on the fountain, you want to get a trick off the middle gap and then trick off the edge of the fountain to clear. If you fail to get a trick off the middle gap, you can recover by exiting more towards the side.
This shortcut on Crystal Dungeon is so overused that it's basically the regular route at this point. Luckily, it is very simple to do. You want to be on the right side of the road, and upon tricking off this ramp, you want to nosedive then turn hard left upon landing. The goal here is to get a bounce, so that you can take this shortcut much tighter and wheelie off the edge using your trick boost to clear the gap. However, if you do not get the bounce, it is not the end of the world. Simply get a mini turbo and wheelie off the edge of the road to clear. Crystal Plains has a massive shortcut that requires three mushrooms, though it can be quite difficult to perform. You want to be aligned along or just to the right of the grass edge and start a drift just before reaching this sign. You want to shroom upon hitting the grass and before being airborne you want to be drifting hard left. Once airborne you need to yank your joystick right to get more air to clear the gap. Yeah TF inputs seem to be a common theme here. Once landing in the dirt, you want to shroom again and aim for the left side of the haystack. You want to get a trick off the little ramp and shroom again upon landing to clear the dirt. Definitely in the top 3 most important shortcuts coming up next is the shortcut on CTR Cortex Castle. This shortcut can be done shroomless and saves many seconds of time, so doing this all three laps when possible is a must. There are multiple ways of doing this shortcut. Personally, I use the mini turbo method by starting wide and getting a mini turbo close to the wall and then releasing and tricking to reach the platform ahead. If you struggle to get the mini turbo, you can also do this shortcut by aligning very close to the wall and performing a hop trick. Now, if the shortcut is blocked, the best thing to do is to combine the two methods by getting a mini turbo, releasing, and doing a hop trick to get even more air to clear the gap. You can also use this method as a safety net when it's not trapped to make sure you clear the gap as well. Dark Matter Shrine is full of shroomless shortcuts and strats that really help you break away from the path, making this an excellent front running track. The biggest shortcut is located right at the start of the lap where you drift off and land on what people say is a bean, but I'm really not sure. To do this shortcut, you want to be on the very left side of the road. The road is shaped in such a way where on the left side, it dips after the finish line. You want to hop right at the top of this slope to send you down to the bottom. Upon landing, start a wide drift to the right and shoot off the side of the road to make it onto the beam while avoiding the black out of bounds. You want to make sure you drift pretty wide because if you drift hard right or even 45 degrees, it'll be too sharp and you will fly into the out of bounds. However, if you feel that you drifted too sharply upon attempting, you can recover by holding left in midair to avoid the out of bounds. Now, if you are starting a race in a time trial or in second place, you can still do a shortcut by aligning twice to the left to make sure your character's head is aligned with the blue edge. Then you want to do the same thing, but instead of hopping, you want to do a spin drift. This will give you a really good alignment to do the shortcut. If you do not feel like attempting the shortcut in an online race, you can still land on the beam by driving off later as demonstrated here, which still saves a good amount of time. Although intended to be one, I would not consider this route on Delfino Island to be a shortcut because literally everyone takes this nowadays which is why you will struggle a lot if you are the only one going around in an online race. Starting off, there is this gap that needs to be cleared. The first thing to keep in mind is that the gap in between the two docks is the smallest on the right side. There are two main methods of clearing this gap. The first method is by starting wide and getting a mini turbo then hopping in the opposite direction. You can also do this without getting a mini turbo, but I like to get it for safety measures. The second method is by approaching the dock on the right side and doing a spin drift to make it across. The second part of the shortcut can be done by doing a wheelie off the left side of the ramp, or by drifting to the left and holding right once you trip. Do not simply try to trick off the ramp normally as you will most likely fall off. A backup strat for this shortcut when it is blocked is to drift left off the right side of the first ramp and the ramp afterwards.
Desktop Dash is another front-running track with a series of two shortcuts. The first one involves this battery. You want to align just a little bit to the left of the corner of the ruler, then do a hop trick to the right to land on the battery. From there, you want to do a drift trick to the right to land on the boost panels. Once you land on the boost panels, you want to follow them and hop off to the left of this battery ahead. Though you are not done yet, you can do another shortcut by drifting right off this boost panel and tricking to clear this gap. Doing both these shortcuts successfully can save a lot of time over going around and can help you front run this track. Now on to the Final Grounds Shroomless Cut, yet another Shroomless Cut that saves loads of time. Final Grounds is one of the most popular tracks in CDGP, I swear I play this track every time I play CT Lounge. For this shortcut, I like to drive along this yellow line, and then right as I am approaching the wall, drift hard left. I then release my mini turbo and wheelie once I hit the edge of this circle pattern on the road. Once airborne, you have to make the decision on how much you need to nosedive in order to make it under the wall or if you need to nose up at all. I recommend practicing this shortcut to get a feel for how to control yourself in midair, depending on how much distance you get from the release. I recommend holding hard left here because the gap between the road and the wall is much smaller if you go wide, and most likely no matter how much you nose dive, you are face planting into that wall. Lakeside Park has a shortcut at the end of the lap that is just broken. However, you can actually do the shortcut shroomless. This allows you to play the track from the front instead of praying for a shroom to do the shortcut every time as going around loses loads of time. To do this shortcut, you want to start as wide as possible. Drift right towards the ramp and right before hitting the grass, you want to release your mini turbo, wheelie, and hop into the grass. If done correctly, you should have enough speed to trick off this ramp and clear the gap. You can also hop trick this ramp for extra air if needed. If you find that you lose all your speed before hitting the ramp, then you are releasing your mini turbo too early and your mini turbo isn't lasting until the ramp. And if you find that you lose all your speed before hopping, then you are releasing your mini turbo too late. I recommend practicing the timing for this to get it down consistently. Lakeside's counterpart, Riverside Park, has this double shortcut that you can do with two mushrooms, making it one of the most item-reliant tracks in CDGP. The first ramp is pretty awkwardly placed, so for beginners, I recommend starting very wide, slowing down and hopping onto the ramp. Proceed by shrooming and tricking off the yellow ramp while aiming to the left. Upon landing, drift towards the brown bridge and use your second shroom to cross it. Just watch out for the plant as it will spin you out if you hit it. There is also a faster method to do the shortcut. For this method, you want to start wide and drift right towards the grass edge. Upon hitting the grass edge, you want to use your mushroom and hop over the gap to land on the brown bridge. Once you are on the brown bridge, you want to drift hard right and exit off the side of it, avoiding the yellow ramp. Once you are back on the road, proceed as normal and shroom through the second bridge to clear. However, I do not recommend doing the shortcut unless you are super consistent with it because doing the shortcut saves loads of time anyways and failing it can be very costly. Continuing along with the topic of broken shortcuts, we have the shortcut on Green Park. This shortcut literally cuts off half the map and can be done with three or even two mushrooms. I suggest starting wide towards this big ramp then drifting left once you get onto it. Then trick and hold back for more air to make it onto the cliff. Now you can simply do this with 3 mushrooms, but in order to do it with 2 mushrooms, it's best to wait until your trick boost ends to use your mushrooms, and be in a wheelie as much as possible to max out your speed. The reason why doing this with 2 mushrooms is beneficial is because you can do the other shortcut towards the end of the lap as well to save even more time. And trust me, with a shortcut this broken, you need as big of a lead as you can get.
Melting Man from Melee is one of the most challenging custom tracks in CVGP that has this snow shortcut. In order to do this shortcut with only one mushroom, you want to start wide and perform a drift to the right, aiming for the third boost panel. Once airborne, you want to hold left in midair, then before you land, you also want to release your mini turbo. This will ensure that you go far enough into the snow to clear it with only one mushroom. Once you land in the snow, you want to use your mushroom, wheelie for max speed, and perform a spin drift right when your stream is about to end, by hopping to the right, then immediately holding left. Finally, you want to trick off the edge of the road to clear. Mushroom Island has a shortcut that skips the entire main mushroom section with only one mushroom, making it one of the most broken tracks in TDGP. I've gone on a couple of free wins here by playing Triple Shroom's first set and doing the cut over and over again. To do this shortcut, you want to align to the right of the ramp while having your character's head facing the top right edge of the mushroom pad. You then want to hop into the grass. Doing so will make it so your mushroom boost will still be present once you hit the mushroom pad. After hopping, you want to shroom, wheelie, and perform a hop drift to the right, but do not let go of the drift button once you hop. Once approaching the mushroom pad, you want to nosedive. Nosediving off this mushroom pad will allow your character to turn sharper, therefore needing less displacement. Once you hit the mushroom pad, keep holding a right drift until you are aligned with the mushroom pad below and tilt back. Moving on to the oldest and most iconic custom track in CVGP, Mushroom Peaks. This track has a long mushroom section that is very difficult to clear, and is one of the tracks that new players tend to struggle on the most. The main mushroom section has two routes, the regular route and the shortcut route. Today, we are going to focus on the shortcut route that can be done with one mushroom. To start off, wheelie off this ramp and bounce on the first two mushroom pads. Once you reach the third mushroom pad, trick off of it and hold down on your joystick. Then trick off the next two mushroom pads while holding back to land on the green mushroom pad. For me, I prefer just landing normally on the green mushroom pad in a nosedive. After clearing the green mushroom, this series follows. Trick off the first red mushroom with a nosedive. Then trick off the next mushroom with a tail dive. Trick off the third mushroom with a tail dive and yank your joystick to the right. The reason why I yank my joystick to the right upon tricking off this mushroom is not only because it gives me more air, but it allows my character to move towards the right towards the edge of the next mushroom, which is where you want to use your shroom. Once you reach the second to last mushroom pad, you want to shroom right before hitting it. That way you can get enough speed and height to make it off the last mushroom pad, where you can simply just drift off it to the track below. Now if you feel you used your shroom too early, or you got way too much height off the second to last mushroom pad, you can trick off the last mushroom pad even though your shroom boost has worn off to make sure you land back on the track. Also, make sure to use your mushroom before hitting the second to last mushroom pad, as if you use it after you are going to fall off. That was a lot of mushrooms. Next, we have Rush City Run. This track has a shortcut that can be pretty hidden to new players, but it's a must whenever possible. To do this shortcut, simply trick off the road and drift left towards the red ramp. Then, while you are still in a trick boost, wheelie to make it over the fence. If you struggle to do this method, you can also do this shortcut by aligning wide, getting a mini turbo, and performing a wheelie once you release. Sahara Hideout is a new and complex custom track with many shortcuts. While the sand shortcut is pretty easy, it is only available lap 1, so your main bet of catching up later in the race is to do this gap shortcut at the start of the lap. First, drift trick off this ramp to the right and tail dive. You want to be aligned slightly behind the ramp with your character's head facing towards it at around a 45 degree angle. Then once you approach the ramp, shroom and do a hop trick to the left off of it. You should land on some invisible road where you can continue to drift left to clear the gap. If you struggle to align for the shortcut ramp, I suggest not tricking off the ramp before. That way you will not be in a trick boost and you will have more time for your alignment.
Lastly, we have the shortcut that is present at the start of Yoshi Lagoon. I never see people take the normal route on this one, so learning this shortcut is a must. The main method of doing this shortcut is by aligning to the left of the grass. Once you hit the first boost panel, drift right until you are facing straight ahead. Then drift left towards the first mushroom, trick off of it and notice that it's increased air time. Once you land on the first rock, drift left towards the next mushroom pad and do a drift trick to the left. Land on the rock and then do a drift trick to the right off the final mushroom pad to land back on the boat. If you do not feel comfortable with this method, I suggest not tricking off the second mushroom to make the shortcut much more consistent. Another fun method of doing this shortcut is to align wide left at the start, drift right then left and perform a wheelie off the first mushroom. This will send you perfectly onto the rock where you can complete the rest of the shortcut. I do not recommend doing this shortcut lap 1 as you are vulnerable to wheelie bumps and it is slightly slower than the other method but feel free otherwise as it is really fun to do it this way and it is super consistent once you get the wheelie. And that is it. That is every single important custom track shortcut and how to do them. I really hope you learned something from this video and I hope to see more people trying out the amazing custom tracks that CDGP has to offer. This is also my first scripted video so if you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe as there will be more of these in the future. That is all for this one, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.